I am so excited about having Les Carter, Dr. Carter, back. Parental alienation. Let's kind of define that and the other terms that you and I talked about. So why don't you start that off there and and I'll I'll chime in. Well, a certain percentage of parents who are post-divorce who make it their task to train the children to hate the other parent in the same way they do. Now, they won't say it like that, but that's the the net result. And, you know, for example, I've had cases where let's suppose you have a 13 year old child that's visiting dad and then dad gives that child a gift. And so the child goes back to mom's house and uh, the gift is um, uh, confiscated. It's like, we don't need that here. Or you already have one of those. And little things like that, or uh, these days, uh, you know, things like uh, having a cell phone or how much time you spend on the computer. And uh, there's, there's no effort whatsoever to coordinate. It's like, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the way it's supposed to be. And if that other parent won't coordinate with me, then they're an idiot. And you need to, uh, you need to know how terrible they are. And, and and it's, it's uh, terribly devastating because the only person in that equation, that's really going to be damaged. Is, is not mom and it's not dad. It's going to be the kid. Yeah. Let's talk about what do we do? As much as the problem is horrendously difficult, there are solutions. There might not be cures and complete fixes. I wish there was a way to give a pill to a narcissist who then will actually have empathy and be reasonable. But unless, yeah, unless that be you nice? know, yeah. But so what is your perspective or point of view on the on the intervention level of this problem? Well, let's remind ourselves the best way to teach anything is via modeling. Mm-hmm. And so let, let's suppose you have that narcissistic parent who uh, does make snarky comments or uh, kind of coils up when the other parent is mentioned. Yeah. Uh, if you're trying to uh, to present the the healthier alternative, what you want to do is first you want to ask, how do I come across? Right. Do I come across as controlling or threatened or right. uh, defensive yeah. or angry, or am I able to project a sense of peace or confidence? Right. And it's not phony. It's like I really do believe in the legitimacy of me being me. And right. so uh, your demeanor is by far and away the the number one tool that you have to use to uh, to counteract the the narcissistic alienation. Right. Uh, and then beyond that, I do think, and, and you have to be real delicate about this. I do think that it's fair for that healthy parent to sit down with the kids and talk at whatever age level they are about the differences between yourself and the other parent. Right. And uh, for example, um, uh, let's suppose that um, you're a mother and the father, as you kind of mentioned, is real bossy and overbearing and uh, it's my way or the highway. Well, that mother who's trying to present the healthier alternative can can say something like, you know, there are times when your dad and I don't agree. And that's part of the reason that we got divorced. Uh, Why don't we just agree uh, between you and me when when we're talking with each other? let's let's um, put a high premium on listening to one another. Yeah. And uh, I want to hear what you have to say. And I hope you can hear what I have to say at, at your uh, dad's house. It may be a little bit different, uh, but that's, that's the way I want to manage it with you. And, and you're trying to present yourself as other without being too disparaging uh, to the other parent. You're just simply right. saying, you know, we just do things differently here. And, and so, and the, of course, as they age, you can be a little bit more particular about what your values and principles are. But uh, I, I think you want to speak up, but in such a way that uh, doesn't have ins- insult right. attached to it. So what I want to add to that is it's another perspective that that matches up with yours. I was telling you, I love to come up with terms. And one of the terms that is essential to my self-love recovery treatment program is to build predictive awareness. Love it. Before you do anything, like talk about a divorce, talk about the separation, you have to first know what is SLD? What is a codependent? Why have you fallen susceptible where does it come from? Everything that is about self-responsibility. And then yes. what is the narcissist? 
And then, of course, the human magnet syndrome, which is my thesis from my book. Why did you stay together and why did you lose this and et cetera? Then to be able to predict how will this play out? Because if we know enough, we can predict it. Then execute preliminary stages so that when you do say, I want a divorce, the children have either been unknowingly or knowingly prepped or primed so that you have a fighting chance because even yeah. with everything they know and everything they can predict and all of the advanced preparations, which one of them could be, as you said, talking with the children and it still is a crapshoot. But if we've done our job well with predictive awareness, we'll predict that. And so what I want to say, and then I want to turn it back over to you, is that before you consider doing anything that Les says or anything that I say is do the homework so you can figure out what to do strategically because once you hit that storm, the shit hits the fan. Well, uh, a favorite phrase of mine is knowledge is power. That's yes. what I'm hearing you say. Yes. Uh, you you want to have an, an, enough of an insight into the whole pattern of narcissism. And one of the things I like to do on my YouTube channel is I like to talk about all sorts of uh, nuances right. and uh, hidden kinds of um, uh, aspects of narcissism that you might not see right on the surface. And so it's necessary for you to know what you're dealing with. And, and then, at least for me, my thing is, so that being the case, if I can see it, what would be my better alternative? Right. As a simple illustration, narcissists are known for being highly controlling. And that's part of that uh, codependent self-love yeah. deficiency. Yeah. If I can control you, then I, I win. Well, the opposite of that is uh, to allow space for free choice, at least with between me and that child. Uh, I'll ask the child questions. Well, what do you think? Mm -hmm. or uh, what makes sense to you, or why don't we brainstorm and take a look at the options, the good and the bad options, and figure out what the consequences of each of those would be. Uh, and so you can lean into that. Or uh, another thing, uh, narcissism is known as, as having a lack of empathy. Okay, my better alternative is I want you to know that when you're in my presence, I really want to know who you are from your vantage point. And even if you don't make sense to me, well, you make sense to yourself right now. So tell me how you arrived at that or uh, talk to me about uh, what led you to that conclusion or, wow, that uh, that's more powerful than I thought. Um, tell me more. And, and so you, you want to just uh, have an awareness of what the themes of narcissism are so that you can uh, go into the modeling of the cleaner alternatives. That's how you if possible, break uh, some of the power of that unhealthy um, yes, uh, parenting absolutely. on the other side. And it's the modeling that I mentioned a few minutes ago. And so add to the modeling is to move from victim, co-conspirator. See, one of the things yes. that I, I do differently than a lot of um, my colleagues out on the internet is I, with empathy and support and firsthand knowledge, hold the SLDs responsible um, even though they're victims also, um, because they gave up power. But I don't do that to shame them, but I do that to help them understand what we need to change so that they can forgive themselves. You, you may be the A victim, but you don't have to be the victim, capital T, capital V. Oh, to, to explain, um, explain so, that more. That sounds profound. Just, well, you know, it, 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 let, let's suppose that you were in a marriage and the, yeah. uh, the narcissist was just brutal. Yeah. Uh, well, you were victimized. Right. Uh, now, uh, so you're a victim. Uh, when I say you're the victim, well, it becomes your identity. Uh, and it's like, okay, my victimization is not going to be everything that, that I uh, relate to. I, I'm still a decent person. I'm still somebody who has some positive characteristics. I, I have, you know, a pleasantness that I can uh, share. And so I, I have some initiatives that I can operate with. And what happened to me in that narcissistic relationship isn't the sum total about who I am. Right. That's something for me to think about. But before you said that and caught my interest, I was going to say, um, as a part of my predictive awareness process or preparing for the storm, is to understand if the insidious nature of gaslighting, manipulation, and what we've talked about before, 
is already set and the kids have drank the poison, they're brainwashed, as difficult as it is, but to help my client understand when you have to stop, and again, this might seem counterproductive, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, when you have to stop hoping to convince the child and be more assertive to do things that are going to upset the child, and in present time could make you believe that you are hurting yourself. You have to battle the fear that your child's going to hate you. Uh, but knowing that this child, and, and like a lot of um, healthy parents, knowing that you can punish a child and they can, especially a teenager, and they might say, I don't love you and I hate you, but know that the next day they're going to smile and forget about it. But in a, in, yeah. a, in a larger sense, know that this bad guy position that you're being labeled it could be the best thing that you've done, even if it means the child won't talk to you. Taking an unpopular. Exactly. My my presumption is that I don't take my cues from a, a narcissistic person. Um, that person does not set my pace. And kind of what you were suggesting there uh, with respect to the way you talk to the, uh, to the kids. Yeah. It's like, I'm just, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try as best I can to speak my truth. I'm going to show you by illustration, by example and modeling what cleanness looks like. And, and when we disagree, uh, notice my tone of voice. I'm not going to yeah. be harsh. I'm not going right. to be mean. I'm not going to be condescending, but I can have calm firmness. And I'm going to, I'm going to do all that I know to present the, uh, the better alternative. And, and then as the child is older, whether we're talking about 15 or 28 or yeah. 37, uh, then we'll, we'll expand our discussions. The mindset that you said, I have a similar one and I, I do this exercise. Um, I did it when my son was eight or nine is I pretended that he's 30. He's in therapy because by time 30, they're going to sort through this stuff. What is he going to talk about in therapy about his childhood? And yep. that exercise. What, what kind of material am I giving that kid to work with? Yeah. So that exercise puts you into a frame of mind where you're matching the child and a grown adult. And it always has produced confidence for me that he might not agree with what I'm doing. He might not recognize what I'm doing. But at age 30, when he is going to talk that 30 about year old self may look back mother, he's going to talk about, well, dad, and that always kept me grounded. And yeah. when I felt insecure, Love it. so, so you were saying, I just didn't want to forget that. So sorry for interrupting. Yeah. And, and basically what, what I'm saying is uh, the earlier you can uh, establish yourself as being a model of decency, yeah. then as you're suggesting, as the years go by, your credibility rating remains uh, much higher. I wish I knew this more when uh, years ago, but I asked anyone who's listening, who's experiencing these problems, or if they're using predictive awareness, know, it knows it's going to happen, is to just trust that <laughs> this might be heretical and everyone's going to go, what? But nothing, so nothing that Les or I am teaching you will work if your foundation is that of self-love deficiency or self-love deficit disorder that's filled with core shame, terrified of pathological loneliness, has this unbearable addiction to a relationship, which means it glues you to this. And yeah. that all of what we have said and want to say requires you to heal yourself. And using the, the airplane analogy is if you're flying on a plane, they say, put the mask on yourself first for your children, yeah. because you're no good if you should pass out. Well, everything that we want to say and more, believe us, <laughs> or at least think about it. Cause we, well, I, to me, that's a good way to end yourself. here today. Cause I, I, I think you're so spot on and uh, you, you've got to be coming from your own place of inner peace. Yes, yes, yes. And none of us have perfectly arrived at that, by the way, but uh, kids know. Yes. Uh, if you're at least working on it and uh, kids can respect it. And so it's spot on. Yeah. And so if one of the parent is a narcissist, so that makes us, then if we like mess up, have our moments of rationality, we can say we're sorry hug, you know, do whatever we do. And 
if we did our jobs right, the kids will forgive us. So yeah, there's, there's plenty of room for making mistakes because if you love yourself and you are, as you said brilliantly, pr present as this role model, that could be the most potent defense to parental alienation. So yeah. I have so many more ideas for the next topic, but I'd like to suggest, at least for my community, is to write in your comments about what should we talk about next? We'll uh, we'll continue with this because, you know, one of the things that uh, makes me feel good about the kind of work that I do is if I know that I've been at least um, a party to helping individuals see the patterns in uh, the generational patterns and then be mm -hmm. the one to break it. And right. so that's what we're talking about here. Don't stop what you're doing. Um, you are the yep. real thing. And to anyone listening or watching this, go to YouTube, go to his podcast. But he also has a host of books. And if you think his wisdom and his knowledge is something to admire, check those books out. For any of you guys that are just getting to know me, all of my stuff, stuff, including my book, my seminar trainings, and other offerings can be seen at selfloverecovery.com or send us an email yeah. at help at selfloverecovery.com. Thank you, Doc. Ross, thanks for having me. And uh, we're going to do it again, okay? We'll, yeah. we got lots more to say. Yes, I enjoyed it. Take care.